You model the weather to either be cloudy, rainy, or sunny. So weather short and W is one of the three states. You know the probability of each of the events. Then you observe the weather. And you observe cloudy, sunny, sunny, rainy, cloudy, sunny. So seven days in total. Two out of the seven are cloudy, one is rainy, and four are sunny. But what is the probability for this? For this, we need a multinomial distribution, which we will introduce in this video. Hi, welcome to this video. The agenda is that I will first give an intuition for the multinomial distribution, then we will derive the probability mass function, and in the end we will look at how it is implemented in TensorFlow probability. So the task was that you are given an observation and you know that two out of seven days it is cloudy, one out of seven days it's rainy, and four out of seven days it's sunny. And you want to know the probability of this. Naively, you might think that you can just use a categorical distribution. So let's say just use a categorical and for this you would say the weather well is modeled by a categorical that takes the parameter vector theta that we already know perfect and for instance let's say that theta is given as the vector 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 and if you then calculate the probability of the data set which in the end is nothing else than the likelihood so you take the product over the probability for each of the events and then you would get 0.2 to the power of 2 times 0.3 to the power of 1 times 0.5 to the power of 4. And if you crunch the numbers, then you get 0.075. But this is the wrong answer. And it is wrong because it's too low. And the reason it's too low, because in the calculation of the likelihood, we are assuming that we observe the weather in this sequence. So that we first have cloudy, then sunny, and so on. But I could also swap, for instance, the cloudy and the sunny observation, and we would still have the same reduction, so 2 out of 7, 1 out of 7, 4 out of 7, but we have a different sequence. And then we get, of course, the same probability, but we also get this again. In essence, we have to consider multiple paths. So the reason is there are multiple paths. And by multiple paths, I just mean the multiple permutations that we could have in this data set in order to reduce to 2 out of 7, 1 out of 7, and 4 out of 7. And if you watch the video on the binomial distribution, then this might already ring a bell because this is a similar argument that we made in this video, just with the difference that for a binomial, we only looked at discrete variables that can take two states. So that would be modeled by Bernoulli's. Now we are looking at discrete random variables that can take more than two states. So in our case, three states of the weather. Let us look at an example what I mean by multiple paths. And let us consider that we observe for two days. So we start and then the first day can either be cloudy, rainy, or sunny, and it is cloudy with 0.2, rainy with 0.3, and sunny with 0.5. And then after each of the days, the same states are equally likely again. So if we have cloudy weather, then again, after the cloudy day, we can have another cloudy, we can have a rainy day, we can have a sunny, and the same is true for the rainy, we could have the same days, and the same for the sunny, we could also have cloudy, rainy, and sunny, and the probabilities, they stay the same. And in this example, we want to look at the probability that one out of two is rainy and one out of two is sunny. And of course, then we can have two possible paths here. We can have first rainy weather and then sunny weather, or we could first have sunny weather and then rainy weather. So we have two paths. And now if we were to calculate the probability of this, so let's say P of what we just said with the one out of two and one out of two is, well, 0 0.3 times 0 0.5, which would be we have first rainy, then sunny weather, plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.3, which is we would first have sunny weather and then we have rainy weather. And then we can, of course, rearrange the order in the multiplication and we get two times 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. And then we have two components here that account for the probability of the event we just created here. And we have here the probability for any of the paths. And we just saw that it does not matter in which order we observe the states because this multiplication can be changed in order. So this probability will stay the same. And the important factor now is the two, which is the number of paths. And this here looks really similar to the categorical 
if you recall what we did in our naive approach, then it also makes sense since this is just a likelihood of the data. And what we have on the left side, that is called the multinomial coefficient. If you watched the video on the binomial distribution, then we had the binomial coefficient. And now we have the multinomial coefficient because we have more than two states. And I want to emphasize on the point that the categorical is often wrongly called a multinomial. But in the case we only have one possible path, then they coincide, but not in general. So let me note this down. So why the categorical, why the categorical is sometimes called multinomial. Okay, let's look at how we encode the event that we just calculated the probability of with the one out of two rainy and one out of two sunny. For this, we need a composition of one hot categoricals. So what we just created has to be a composition of one hot categoricals. So a composition of one hot categoricals. And recall the one hot categorical wasn't using the integer encoding with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, but instead was using an encoding with vectors where only one component is hot. So in our case, we use a lowercase k for a random variate that we wanted to observe where we have one rainy and one sunny, and we would then get 0, 1, 1. And recall that this cannot be a random variate for the one hot categorical because it would be greater than one because more than one state would be hot. And this would be the composition of 0, 1, 0 transpose plus 0, 0, 1 transpose. Whereas this is associated with rainy weather and this one with sunny weather. And with this, we just say that we want to query the multinomial with one out of two being rainy and with one out of two being sunny. Of course, this doesn't have to be restricted to only once. Um, we could also have a K, which is for instance, two, eight and 23. And in this case, we would be observing the weather for 31 days or so an entire month. And in this one month, we would have 23 sunny days. We would have eight rainy days and we would have two cloudy days. Now we have seen we can make a graphical approach in how to find the number of paths to evaluate the multinomial coefficient. We can also make this a little more formal and define the probability mass function of the multinomial with the probability of one sequence, which is just a product from D0 to capital D minus one over the probability entry D raised to the K index D. So we multiply the D entry of our probability vector KD times of itself. So for instance, in our case, we would have the probability of cloudy weather to the power of two times rainy weather to the power of eight times sunny weather to the power of 23. Then we have to find the number of paths and that is given as the multinomial coefficient. And this is n factorial over the product from D is zero to capital D minus one over KD factorial. We have here as said, the probability of one path. And here we have the multinomial coefficient. And with this, we have our multinomial fully defined. So this is the multinomial given by the parameter vector theta and the number of days or the number of observations. And from this, we can then also deduce the parameters or in other words, what we have to say for our distribution. And we have first theta vector, which is the probability for each state, or in our case, it would be the probability for each weather type. And then we also have to say, similar to the binomial, the n, which would be the number of observations. And in our case, this would just be the number of days. We also have some restriction on the parameters and our random variates. Let's define the restrictions here. And the restrictions are first that, of course, our theta parameter vector has to be from the zero one interval raised to the power of d. So it has to be a d-dimensional vector with entries being only between zero and one because there are probabilities and it has to sum up to one. So if we sum up all the entries, then we have to get one out of it. Additionally, and this is really important, if we sum up the composition vector for the multinomial, so if we have the sum from d0 to capital D minus one over kd, this has to be n. 
So in our case, for instance, if we would sum up these entries here, then they have to be equal to the number of n for which the multinomial has to be defined with, otherwise we might get into trouble. And let's also look at what a data set could look like. For instance, if we would observe the weather for seven days, then we could have a data set that is given as follows. So we would first have a week with two cloudy days, three rainy days and two sunny days. Then we have one cloudy day, one rainy day, five sunny days. And then we have another week with two cloudy days, one rainy days and four sunny days and so on and so forth. Finally, let's have a look at TensorFlow probability. For this, we will create a weather observations random variable. This will be a TensorFlow probability distributions multinomial. We will feed it with the probability array that we also created earlier, which is 0.2 for the cloudy, 0.3 for the rainy and 0.5 for the sunny. And then we have the total count, which will be the number of observations. Let's say we're looking at the month with 31 days. Then we have our weather observation and we can look at it and see it has an event shape of three. So per sample, we are expecting a vector of length three. Let's sample it then. And then we get one sample a month with five cloudy days, nine rainy days and 17 sunny days. We can also sample it multiple times. Then we get a data set and we see this is like one month, another month and so on and so forth. And we can also query the probability of a certain month. And for this, we will look at the month that we also had in our example earlier, where we have two cloudy days, eight rainy days and 23 sunny days. That's highly unlikely, so it's really low probability. But since there are so many combinations already, we might encounter spaces where probability in general is quite low. So when we have those kind of problems, then it's usually better to work in terms of the log probability. Then we see that we are not reaching points where our floating point precision might kick in. And let's also check what TensorFlow probability would do if we feed it with a um, random variate which is not valid, so which would not add up to 31. So for instance, let us check the probability of an event where we have one, one, two, one cloudy, one rainy, one two sunny days in a month with 31 days, which does not make sense at all. And the interesting thing is it does not raise an arrow. So you have to be really cautious about this. But what you see, you get a probability which is 10 to the 31, which is way greater than one. And the probability mass that this is what we're calculating here has to be in between zero and one. So this is absolutely wrong. With this insight, we are at the end of the video for the multinomial distribution. If you enjoyed it, then I would really appreciate you liking and subscribing. Here you will see similar videos. I'm looking forward to see you next time.